Welcome back to the watch list. We're watching these cruise lines. Have you seen Carnival shares? So those are moving higher today. The cruise line posted mixed earnings, positive outlook. These things have been bouncing back. When you look at Carnival, Royal Caribbean, um, Norwegian, I want to talk more about this group, how the consumer may behave. Arnie Weissman's with us, Editor-in-Chief Travel Weekly and North Star Travel Group brand. Jamie Katz, Senior Equity Analyst at Morningstar. Thank you both for being with us. So Arnie, when you see Carnival today with the up arrow, um, the bookings, people are still going to cruise lines. They think they provide value. People love them, they, right? Do they or don't they? Arnie, your thoughts? <laughs> they do. In fact, uh, this year, most of the sales take place during what's called wave season. And this is the beginning of the year the uh, way bookings were up, the prices were up. Uh, generally speaking, very, very positive news. Uh, the cruise lines are doing very well. There's uh, the, the one sort of darker note uh, on today's carnival earnings was the impact of the Baltimore Bridge because the carnival legend uh, home ports there it was not in port when the, when the bridge accident happened. Um, and if you saw the, the ticker today, it kind of did a sharp dip uh, when that came out, but then more than recovered. And uh, the earnings looking forward uh, for the annual earnings, they've, they've raised their annual profit uh, forecast. And um, I think things are looking very good overall. I see. Okay. Um, you know, and I, when I look at some of your reports, Jamie, I know you like the group overall. Um, you have ten dollars um, upside for Carnival. You have ten dollars upside. It looks like for NCLH, a couple of bucks, three dollars upside for Royal Caribbean. So you see some still some moves higher from here. What will drive the cruise line industry? Yeah, I think what we're going to see is that the uh, profitability really starts to normalize in the back half of the year as the occupancy numbers start to lap uh, traditional occupancy metrics. And so some of the gains that we're getting early in this year on the yield side um, will sort of come to fruition as we move into the third and fourth quarter. And we'll be able to see that on a normalized run rate, the companies are still able to increase pricing based on what they're offering, the value proposition. Um, the ability to entice uh, customers to to add on things like excursions or um, extra extra things on board. And I think that will be proof of concept um, that this business has staying power. Yeah, and just to clarify here and, and elaborate, I should say, Jamie, you have five stars on Carnival, four stars on Norwegian, and three stars on Royal Caribbean. Why is that? Well, I think Royal has has run up quite a bit more than the other two, and part of that is that it's been uh, perceived a bit more as uh, a premium or a premier operator out of the lot. Right? They have uh, cleaned up the balance sheet very quickly. They have hit really explicit goals that they've laid out early. Um, and I think that investors have rewarded that. Um, for the other operators, I think there is a little bit more caution around um, balance sheet conditions. Obviously, we have Carnival today saying that they're going to try to get back to investment grade um, by 2026. It looks like that's very feasible given, you know, the numbers that we have in our model. Um, and, you know, Norwegian's still working on that as well. And so I think um, there just tends to be a little bit more caution around balance sheet conditions. Yeah, and I understand what you're saying, too, because you, when you when you look at Royal Caribbean, it's really around its highs over the last one year, where it gained 131 percent. Carnival's had a great year, too, up 95 percent, but has been an upward trajectory. So is Norwegian. So, Arnie, as I look at um, what you're focusing on, you're thinking about the pros and the cons, you know, their mark, how they're marketing themselves, how they will continue to get some record bookings, but some challenges as well. Give us uh, your pros and cons here, Arnie. Sure. One of the things that I thought was really positive in today's earnings was the report about new to cruise being up 30 percent and the, with a repeat rate in the cruise industry of about 85 percent, getting these people to book for the very first time becomes more and more important if they're going to see growth continue. They've got not there are nine new ships entering the cruise industry this year. They got rid of a lot of uh, old tonnage during the pandemic so that the equipment is newer, 
you saw the, the largest ship ever built, the Icon of the Seas from Royal Caribbean came out earlier this year. Um, but they're also putting out, it's kind of at both ends, they're putting out the very big ships, but there's also quite a rise in the expedition ship category. So these are ships, smaller ships, uh, generally very high uh, fares to get to go on them, going to places like Antarctica, uh, the Galapagos Islands, even the Kimberley Islands in, uh, off of Australia. So you're seeing uh, more diversity coming in, more tonnage coming in, and all those things are very, very positive. Uh, Carnival did mention that they're expecting the $10 million hit, $10 yeah. million dollar hit uh, as a result of the Baltimore Bridge, but also they're challenged a bit in the Red Sea. Uh, fuel prices are likely to still be going up. Pricing is not really, I think, where it should be when you look at the value of a cruise right. versus a land vacation. And uh, what you're also seeing is a lot of the large hotel companies upping their investment in all-inclusive resorts. And those are going after the same consumer, generally speaking, as the cruise lines are. So uh, there's some challenges there. Okay. One of the things. Okay. I think I'm going to leave it right there, Arnie, until next time. Yeah. Thank All you right. so much. It's great to see you both. Arnie Weissman of Travel Weekly, Jamie Katz of Morningstar. Thank you both.